To share a little bit about what this has looked like for me, I, if you knew me in the, the almost decade that I worked here at Central, um, you probably at some point heard me say that I was never going to have biological kids. I was so confident <laughs> that I would never have biological kids. I had known since I was a little kid that adoption was something that I was called to. I knew, I knew it in my bones. And adoption was one of the things that I was like most passionate about, that I would adopt kids someday. And I knew that that was what God had called me to. And so over many years of talking with families and saying, I don't think I'm going to have biological kids, I only want to adopt, I, heard, I talked to many, many families who said, oh, we always wanted to adopt, oh, we always wanted to foster, and then we started having biological kids, and, and then we just never did. And every time I heard that, my heart would just like tighten a little bit more. And I was like, well, not me. <laughs> I know that I'm going to adopt. I know that's what I'm called to. And I decided in my heart to make sure that that never happens, which is just the reality. Like, it just is what happens in lots of families, and there's nothing wrong with that. But for me, it was like so clear in my heart that I was going to adopt that I was like, I'm going to close out then any possibility of anything else so that I stay focused on, on this mission. And so I was so clear. <laughs> so confident that that's what I was going to do. And we did. We were called to adoption. I think we still are called to adoption um, later down the road. And we just have known so clearly that this is what we wanted. And Real Hope was started out of this passion and this desire. So back in 2018, for the Real Hope Project, I go on a mission, or I go on a video shoot, and I meet a boy named Martez Antonio. And I was like, this is the coolest kid I've ever met. Just fell in love with him right there on the video shoot. Got to go through the adoption process. Tez was formally, officially adopted in 2019. And he is just the best kid ever. And I remember sitting on my couch a few months after Tez was home, um, doing some quiet time with Jesus and just like basking in the glow of getting everything I wanted. <laughs> and I was just thanking God, like, okay, we do, I did it, we adopted it, I'm so excited, it's going well, we get to lead this organization, just so thankful and just so joyful um, over those steps that we got to take. And then, as I'm talking about it, as I'm, as I'm praying about it, I just hear this whisper, maybe the next one's a baby. And I was like, hold up. <laughs> This is not the plan. Uh, and I continue to kind of pray about it and pray about it. And when I say pray, I mean like wrestle. I mean like fight with God <laughs> over this call to have a baby. And I felt it very, very clearly, like in my gut. And I was so upset. <laughs> I, it was just not a part of my plan. And had a really hard time sort of reconciling, knowing that I was called to adoption, with then God saying, and also this. And I decided what probably needed to happen is that God just didn't, he didn't have all the information that he needed, and he needed me to like walk him through all the reasons that we shouldn't do this. So I told God, um, Tez just came home. It's only been a few months. Like, that's crazy. We cannot have a baby already. Also, I hate pain. <laughs> Much of my life is built around the avoidance of pain. And you want me to go through childbirth? Pass. Pass on that. I told God, I am running an organization all around adoption. I speak at churches every Sunday and stand in front of crowds of people and tell them to adopt kids, and you want me to do that while pregnant? I don't even know how to do that. <laughs> and lastly, I told God, I feel almost embarrassed. I would be embarrassed. I have been so vocal about this. I started a whole organization about it, and now you are calling me to have a baby, and I don't know how to reconcile those things. I had like a world-class temper tantrum about it. <laughs> My temper tantrum could put Taika Friday's temper tantrums to shame. And I just wrestled with God for many months over <laughs> making this decision, and eventually just could, could sense that it's what the Holy Spirit was leading. And so a few months after that, I, we were very lucky and blessed in that we got pregnant really fast. And I still was like, I don't know why we're doing this. I don't understand this. I know that God's heart is for adoption. I know there are kids who need families, and I, I don't understand this. And I remember being on a walk when I was about seven months pregnant with Taika, and just sensing that God was maybe saying that she was really going to be a healing presence in Tez's life, that she was going to bring some healing to him in some ways that I could not and that Pete could not. And, and that gave me just a little, little glimmer of like, okay, 
Maybe he does know what he's doing. <laughs> Maybe God is right about this step. And so Taika came into the world and she really has been a healing presence for Tez. Like she loves him endlessly, recklessly. Like it's been so beautiful for him to be loved so unendingly by a little ball of squish. And I think for me, it was so powerful to see that like, yes, adoption is something that I'm called to. And I've felt my entire life like my calling is to help kids find Jesus and family. Help kids find Jesus and family. And that is still the call. But the expression and the activity of that call should and does look different from season to season. 